Welcome. Welcome. Hey, we have a visitor. We have company. Do you have a visitor? Mm hmm. So, everybody, welcome to our new segment on Pop My Culture, The Sticky Spot, <gasps> where we will be doing bi weekly reviews of whatever is hot in pop culture, be it movies, TV shows. What's in my pants? I don't know. Could be anything. It'll be a hodgepodge of stuff. <clears throat> so we do have a lovely intro because everything we do has to have an intro. And I think it's very fitting for the sticky spot. Because after all, my co-host is known as the cinnamon roll. So here is our new little intro. In a world where things get moist. The sticky spot. <laughs> oh, pure ruination. I love it. It makes me laugh oh, so great. much. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It's all about the splat. And on the show, speaking of which, we will be, at the end of each episode, we will be giving a, a numeric um, score for whatever we're, do we're discussing. Um, and, you know, some have thumbs up, some have... I don't know. What do they have, Shanti? I don't know. Thumbs, Thumbs down. down. Splats. Well, that's what we have. We'll see how many splats we give it out of five. How about that? Sounds good to me. Let's do that. So we are here today to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. And as you can see, my childhood friend, who is a raccoon, has come to join us for the review. He did not come with me, but because he is mine, automatically I'm just going to speak for him and say that he loved it. So, right? Right. Okay. So I'm going to put him away now. But before we get to that, um, we do want everyone to know that we did uh, create a Patreon page, which is currently live. So if you want to go ahead and join, we have three tiers, which you can go ahead to the website and you can check out which tier you feel like you can belong to or afford, obviously, because we know everyone's uh, wallets are stretched thin. And of course, if you look at the banner down below, you can go right to the website, patreon.com slash pop my culture. We already have four patreons and we only just went Yay! live on wednesday so thank you very thank much you to ghost which is 1000th ghost thank you to scott and kim of used and abused thank you to our lovely lunar girl who is the red five cruise director as i like to call her and then of course last but certainly not least to our good friend steve who is the co-host of rebel rock radio with dj please go check out their stream. They have a really great stream. They usually give some really uh, uh, great suggestions for rock music. If you like rock music and they talk about all sorts of stuff. So, and also if you are our Patreon, you'll get to watch this right after we're done recording, which is tonight, Thursday. And for the rest of our lovely audience that always stays true to us, we will be dropping this on our YouTube channel Friday. So I hope you enjoy it. Remember to subscribe, like it, hit the notification, or I'm sorry, pop the notification bell. And of course, please leave us a comment. But now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Okay. I'm already emotional just thinking about the movie because <laughs> it was a hell of a roller coaster. Um, I don't know about you, Josh, but did you go into the movie with any expectations at all? Yeah, I mean, I think I had pretty good, high uh, expectations. You had honestly. high expectations. Yeah, I thought that the um, I mean, I didn't like the second one quite as much as the first one, but I I think in general, they've been the most consistent franchise in the 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 MCU, and um, and I yeah, I had high hopes. I did. And I was not disappointed. I was the opposite. I'm definitely uh, consider myself to be part of that crowd that is starting to feel the fatigue. And so it's not that I had high or low expectations. It was just getting to the point where I was kind of like, you know what? I'm just going to go and go. I'm just going to watch it to watch it. 
you know, not going to go in with any like preconceived uh, notions that I'm going to hate it or I'm going to love it. And honestly, I think tempering my excitement like that, it really helped because I loved this movie. Um, I really did. I, I can tell you right now when I was done, as soon as the credits were over, I said, this is my favorite Guardians of the Three movies. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. Yeah, it was my favorite. Um, I would say it's probably top five best MCU movies in many ways. Um, I would agree with that too. Yeah, it was it was very well done, and uh, James Gunn definitely proved that he was the guy for this project, start to finish. Oh yeah, I, I've been saying you know, even leading up to the movie that if anyone knows how to do. Uh, misfits well write them well it's it's him for some reason he just always tends to write outcasts and stuff that's why i enjoyed his suicide squad movie a lot better i thought peacemaker was absolutely amazing and this was great so you know this was definitely up his alley and you could definitely tell that they let him do whatever the hell he wanted he definitely had carte blanche on on this movie so it was nice to see him go full force with it to the point where and he really pushed that PG-13 line. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm frozen. <laughs> Josh froze. <laughs> what a face to freeze on, too. Why so serious? <laughs> now he's trying to blink. There you are. <laughs> You're back. <laughs> sort of. Ah, the magic of producing. <laughs> and here I am. There you go. You're back. I caught in a time warp for a second there, I think. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Um, were you happy that you finally like came out to the movies? For out of the time, time warp, yes. Out of the time warp, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I know you haven't had much of a chance to go to the movies lately, so I'm glad that this is the one that kind of brought you out. Yeah, it was it was a good return. Um, yeah, I hadn't really had enough time to go and see much lately, and I honestly wasn't in the best of moods going into it, and um, it didn't take long for the, the humor to snap me out of it and for the story to engage me and for the visuals to mesmerize me um uh, i really do think in many ways it was a perfect film for what it was trying to achieve i agree i yeah and i think considering that a lot of the complaints recently about marvel have been the special effects and stuff like that this one definitely looked really good yeah really really good and um i somehow made the uh I guess fortunate accident now that I think about it. Um, I accidentally bought the tickets in 3D, which I I don't do 3D, especially with wearing glasses. I never find them to fit appropriately or it's disorienting. And I gotta tell you, this movie was awesome in 3D. It I hate, you know, things that pop out at you, so that's why I never liked 3D, but this was just perfect there was there's none of that anymore it's just really added some depth to it and they fit perfectly over my glasses so thanks real 3d yeah um i i did not see it in 3d i just saw the saw the standard version um and it was fine uh, i yeah i gotta watch it again i'm definitely gonna watch it again i'll have to watch it in the standard but um do you have any uh favorite moments from the movie specifically Ah, uh, I mean, there were many favorite moments. Um, I did really, really love seeing Rocket realize that he was a raccoon, and and then yeah. when he actually called himself Rocket Raccoon, it was really, really cool for me. Um, and. Uh, and then I do love the uh, the Groot. I love you guys at the end. Um, 
That really got me. And I thought that the fight scene mm -hmm. where they're all kind of in the hallway and there's like yeah. a lot of like slow-mo shots and stuff was a really badass fight scene. And they actually managed to make all of the characters look really cool. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of that. A lot of people have been praising that fight scene, and I agree. It's definitely one of the best. I really loved it. What an en ensemble of yeah. <laughs> badassery. Yeah. And there were just tons of really great, like, comic book shots where it would sort of slow mm -hmm. down, and you just really see these awesome angles, and um, it just looks like they peeled the panels right off the page. Yeah, it was it was very, very, very I mean, well James done. Gunn definitely has an eye for it. Um, he, he understands why comic books are so beloved um and it, it's not just about the story it's not just about it being dark and gritty or whatever and, and and it's not about the realism it's about the mix of it all it's about the absurdity of it mm -hmm. and the groundedness of it right. um and he manages to achieve a fantastic balance between humor and um emotion um and uh and it just uh Every time you're about to just ball your eyes out, he snaps you back with a, a quick quip or, you know, a draxism. And uh, and it just goes Drax. from there. <laughs> I, um, like and, well, I mean, Drax was just he had oh the jokes. He had the jokes in this movie, like all the time when Mantis asks for a Zagnut and he's just like, <laughs> they're all gone. And then he just puts one in his mouth. Just <laughs> completely. Like he's just right in front of her. There's no no humility whatsoever. He's just whatever. He's kind of like I don't know. He's kind of like Sheldon Cooper from Big Bang Theory in a sense, where he's a dick without really realizing that he's being a dick. Because I don't I don't even know how to describe it. I guess maybe because Drax is just so simple in that you know regard. Which I don't know. I think he, he kind of really a dick isn't. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I definitely That's think in that exactly. moment he did. <laughs> poor girl poor mantis she, she's the just... whole couch scene oh man come on he was all of us because i could tell you right now the couch in my living room the moment i'm on you that gotta thing, lay down I'm just it makes me fall asleep i don't know what it is <laughs> it can be used multiple purposes um and i do think that one of the best parts of the film was by far the villain oh my god uh, yeah the high evolutionary my lord i had to i had to look up the actor because that's what i always do but i really didn't know who he was and even the stuff that he has been in that were james gunn related because i think uh, i had seen it and you had told me also that was he in peacemaker i can't remember did you say he was in peacemaker i don't believe what so. was he in specifically that, he was in something else was, was it you no, it's always you. I don't know who you've been talking to. But yeah, I don't. Uh, let's see. Let's he see. was. He was in John Wick. That's what it is, John Wick. See, I don't remember him. He John was Wick. no. He, he was, was in. One. He was in Peacemaker. Okay, so he was in Peacemaker. I don't know why I don't remember him. He has a very small filmography, so. He hasn't done a ton. Well, I think and he'll I, be doing a lot now. Oh, I think so, too, because he scared the living shit out of me. And as someone who absolutely loves animals, this movie was extremely difficult to watch. I mean, I was doing some really, really, really shameful crying. I mean, he was just so cruel and an absolute beast of a villain. Oh yeah, I mean he was so, the intensity. Um, he was just this uh, array of insanity. You never knew what he was going to say or what he was going to do. He went from being calm and collected and almost loving to Rocket to literally squeezing his head in his hand um, and treating him like a, a piece of garbage. Um, and it, it's just and the intensity the way that he would go from so calm to just so violent um and yeah just the performance was astounding i mean it's getting to the point where people are now calling for him to replace uh jonathan majors as kang and honestly i'd be on board with that i don't know how they would do <laughs> yeah. it now that we've seen him in this movie 
but we're also in a multiverse kind of thing going on. So I don't know if they could pull it off, but. Well, I, mean, I think he could definitely pull that role off. Hey, um, listen, from what I've heard, Loki's being pushed back to October. So that to me screams, you know, reshoots. reshoots. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know who they're going to pick. And we had this discussion. I don't care how much Marvel thinks they're secretive. If they end up replacing Jonathan Majors, I think it'll eventually come out. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I'm really glad that they told us Rocket Story uh, because I'm not a comic book reader. I didn't grow up reading comic books. I, I appreciate them. I love them. I've started to try and, you know, to start getting getting into it. So... I didn't really know anything about Guardians of the Galaxy until these movies came out. And I was kind of always curious, morbid curiosity, I guess, because obviously seeing what had been done to Rocket, seeing how he looked even in the first movie when his, he's introduced, you know he went through something really, really, really tough, really bad. Something really love, abusive. You got to love the trash pandas. Hell yeah. Clearly I love trash pandas. Had you this little guy. Own. I know. I've had this little guy since I was freaking born, man. I'm not gonna tell you what his name is, though. Mm. Maybe or or what you used to do to him during puberty. Uh, never, never, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. never. Poor thing. He's seen things. Seen nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. <clears throat> He's just as scarred as Rocket. No, that's not true. No. He's been treated very well. Look how good he looks. Come on, man. Uh, 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 <laughs> He's 36 years old. Wow. Well, Almost old. 37. Yeah. Come on. Be nice. <laughs> but no, I did love seeing Rocket's backstory, too. Um, it was painful. And, and I did love that no one died, uh, despite... <laughs> The, the trailer's really given that vibe that we were going to lose one or a part or all of the team. Um, and and I love that this whole movie was just about all of them becoming a family on mm -hmm. a level that they never were in the um, in the in the first two. Uh, they, they were getting there mm -hmm. um, and then it all got kind of torn apart. Um, and now they're all coming together and and there's no no loss for any of the characters. You know, Peter lost his mother in the first movie. Then he loses basically his father through Yondu in the second movie. And, and no one lost anyone in this movie. Um, you thought the whole time you were going to, but, but you didn't. And, uh, and it was actually kind of relieving and they did a really great job with, of misleading the audience with the way that they cut the trailers um, mm -hmm. because everyone was certain of it. I mean, we all knew this was kind of going to be the end of it since Gunn is moving to D.C. DC so yeah. we were just like, well, it's, they're going to kill them all off. You know, maybe they'll keep a few of them, but that'll be it. Um, and then for all of them to survive. I mean, yeah, they're kind of going their separate ways, but it wasn't really a goodbye. It was more of a see you later. Um, so, I, yeah, I loved it. I, oh, they yeah. managed to subvert expectations in all the right ways. Yeah. Ruin Johnson. <laughs> That's how you do. It. Oh, yeah! Real Star Wars. That's what's up right there. No, it's true. I mean, I, I leading up to the movie premiering. I mean, uh, one of my friends, uh, Nick, who you also know, uh, host of uh, Nick Flix Pod. He is a huge Guardians of the Galaxy fan, so he was one of the really one of the only ones that i knew that was actually like legitimately excited and for the last few months he had just been preparing himself and preparing himself for the fact that rocket might be the one to go and a lot of people thought that rocket was actually going to be the one to go or it was going to be all of them and then if they continue doing guardians of the galaxy it would just be with a whole new cast i figured yeah. it'd probably be chris pratt because I'm sure, you know, like most of these actors, like Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans, they, they want to do other things, which I completely understand. You don't want to get typecast. But, yeah, no, I'm glad I I kind of related to the whole thing of them separating and wanting to find themselves, you know, kind of thing. I think that's something that really everyone should do is get to know themselves, especially, you know, 
Mantis, she, you know, she really wanted to discover herself, which I really enjoyed. And oh, of yeah. course, I love, love, love what they did with, um, oh my God, Nebula's character. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they man. actually Boy, made she her. she had a journey. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, when they all heard Rocket's voice and she just starts to cry, I mean, it really showed the person she's become versus mm -hmm. the person that she once was. Um, and I love the honesty between all of them because they yeah, truly are family. And family sometimes is cold to one another and direct in ways that other people won't be because they're blood and they know that. Yeah, they're gonna, take it, yeah um, they're gonna tell you how it is. Yeah, they're gonna tell you how it is. And and uh, yeah, I like that. Hey, I I will have to say I did have one disappointment. <gasps> I was really sad mm -hmm. that Drax did not tell Mantis that he loves her. Um, I want that to happen. They've been implying it this whole time yeah i i i really thought that that was gonna happen as well i was waiting for it and i was kind of yeah i was disappointed as well where i actually thought that maybe the romance where the switch was gonna flip was with nebula and <laughs> josh is trying to catch up with the stream we both froze for just a second. Oh, we did? Oh, on yeah. my end, it looked like I was moving. Okay. You good now? I'm good. Honestly, I actually thought that something was m maybe going to happen between Nebula and... Uh, they do kind of give you that feeling Peter, like at the beginning. Yeah, they gave me that vibe. Especially but, um, the way that she was caring for him while he was like passed out drunk and stuff. Yeah. I well, really maybe, thought something was going to happen there. Maybe they opened the door for it um, with the way that things ended between Peter and um, uh, Gamora at the end of the movie. I mean, it's not the same Gamora, so why yeah, tie yourself? And it seemed to like he had you know? come to terms with like yeah with that, and but at the same time, she had learned to appreciate that maybe he is someone she could love, or at least yeah. see his family. But they also made it very clear that she's not part of their family. Um, right. When when they were all hugging, even the like the townspeople from nowhere, they're all on the ground hugging Peter after he survived. And she sits there and she cries mm -hmm. and she feels the moment, but she stays separate from the rest of them. And then she walks away and then she rejoins her family. And, and you see how you know, Stallone and all of them just, embrace her coming back and and um you know now you see that that is her place because again like you said she's not the gamora that we once knew so yeah it's yeah, funny when it that great. happened i don't know about you but when that happened and she goes back with the uh the ravagers the ravagers um, yeah at the end there it kind of felt like probably what peter had when he was with them with yondu like I found it to kind of be very interesting how they kind of parallel each other a little bit. Yeah. And oh my God, that Yandu. Oh my God. Oh yeah. The that Yandu appearance, cameo. man, that, yeah. that killed me. Cause I don't remember the second movie very much, but that stuck with me because I oh, love yeah. that character. I, I love the actor. So that really, oh, yeah. that one, that one stung. That one stung. No, he's great. Michael Rooker is, is yeah, he's so hardcore in everything that he's in. Um, and he just really hams it up when he needs to. He knows how to do it. Um, and he, he knows how to be intense at the right times. And um, and he really just played the hell out of that character and made it his own. Um, and seeing him kind of be an inspiration to, to Sean Gunn, to Craglin. old Craglin, and, um, you know, making him finally learn how to to use the that wild ass weapon that he had um, i love it i just was practicing. Man, that damn i know that has to hurt uh, that's gotta hurt <laughs> that's gotta hurt that uh, speaking of him practicing though i loved cosmo 
Oh my god! Absolutely loved Cosmo as a massive dog uh, lover, even more so. Uh, yes, she was great, and her mm-hmm. obsession with being so butt hurt about being called a bad dog <laughs> please, throughout please the entire movie. But then, it, you know, but it was great because it had a payoff there in the end when she defended him, and he was like, "She's a very good dog," and, and he said the shit out of it too. She's yeah, he did. Very good She's like, dog. "I know you didn't mean it." <laughs> 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 and it was great. And it just showed that, you know, she's part of the family too. Um, oh, their whole God. community that they're building there on nowhere. It's, it's a really great thing. And, and then it, it had an eighties movie ending with everybody yeah. just dancing in the street yes. for no reason. Why not? <laughs> Fuck it. Just Why cause, not? cause they're all hyped up on cocaine. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. I don't know about that. <laughs> but Maybe sure. just Mountain Dew. I don't know. That's Something. your world. Not ours. <laughs> That's what the 80s were about. I was born in 86. I don't know about any of these things. I'm completely uh, innocent. Right. <laughs> That's the funniest thing you've said all night. <laughs> but, anywho. Anywho, but the acting. Let me tell you, everyone brought it. Um unfortunately for some reason other than parks and rec and gardens of the galaxy chris pratt hasn't really done it for me on that front i felt like he was starting maybe to become a little bit maybe too full of himself but you know what i really really loved him in this movie yeah, i thought he was true everyone to form did a great job yes he was definitely true to form this role was definitely like meant for him i just i love everyone everyone even even sean gunn who he's never like a leading man he's always kind of like a background character but he has started to do you know more stuff so i was really happy to see him and then of course like always you know james gunn's kind of become an adam sandler we saw his wife in there too oh yeah oh yeah but i mean that's his thing though he always hooks up his family so i you know i'm not gonna hate on that but you know what i'm okay with it so long as they're actually good so if you if you did see peacemaker like his wife is not a bad actress no no, like i like her and she was great in this actually great i loved her and i loved i love star lord uh (laughs) <laughs> convincing the, the pink girl <laughs> who as you were telling me was was rat, rat catcher, catcher too. too so again bringing people bringing you know peeps. back but you know yeah. now you know he's letting some of his D- dc folks get some marvel time so yeah. the real question is how many people is he going to poach from marvel um uh, another person that we haven't talked about um was uh will poulter um adam warlock uh oh he he played an idiot so well um he you know he was definitely a bit different from the character that's what i've heard yeah um definitely a lot less serious but Mm -hmm. at the same time he was serious um he was really serious to the point that it made him idiotic and (laughs) absurd um and and i loved it and i loved how almost robotic he was and his whole relationship with his mother um it was very norman batish norman batesish and and it was just yeah i thought he was funny but at the same time i still felt for him you know i mean when you know when the mom died and stuff i thought that was absolutely horrific i did like the attachment that he had to that cute little creature which i need a little plush animal of because <laughs> it's so cute yeah, I thought that that was uh, it was all just really well developed, and it still gave us all the cool comic book Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. Um, but they made everything really their own in this, and and I, I very much appreciated it. And I'm I'm excited to see what they'll do with his character in the future. I mean, I definitely yeah. think he'll show back up later at some point. Um, and I love seeing Rocket's little band of guardians there at the end and and then and then for the entire story to literally come full circle from the beginning with peter running away from his grandfather to Mm -hmm. the end of it all with peter running to his grandfather 
and that embrace and the fact that his grandfather immediately recognized oh. him as He's soon like, as he I saw know him. my grandson. I, I mean, know it was just a beautiful moment. It was. It really, really was. Yeah. It really was. Uh, it. The whole movie got me right right in the feels but again i don't i'm telling you yeah i agree james gunn his middle name may as well be balanced mm -hmm. because he gets god it. maybe he maybe he should do a star wars movie because if anyone seems to I'd know watch it. balance it's james gunn hint hint but yeah no i i i uh i would love to see him do something in the star wars I mean, universe and i'm very excited to see what he's going to do with dc oh i'm um, thrilled I, I was so happy when i heard that news i was like I, yes <laughs> i think he's proven that he understands the characters of that universe and and how to portray them in all the ways that that matter um and uh yeah, I, I'm very, very. I mean, excited listen. Whether see. you're whether you're a superhero or you're a villain, I will. To me, they're all misfits. They're all outcasts because they're unlike what is deemed as normal society. You know what I mean? So again, because I feel like James Gunn knows how to write characters like that so well, I'm very much looking forward to it. And I understand that a lot of people are very upset over the Henry Cavill thing and this and that, but. I am kind of looking forward to his treatment of Superman, a, a superhero that everyone knows I am not a huge fan of. And Christopher Reeve is the only Superman that I've ever truly loved. So I'm looking forward to it. I, I have a lot of faith in him. I'm hoping he can pump some life back into this genre. I still think people are probably a little bit over it. Oh, the comic I mean, book fatigue is real. It is, but real. it's it's Whether not. Writing it, is good or not, I just it can't be the only thing in the theater it, anymore. It just it, can't. It, but it, you know, it there again. It's about the balance, and I think yeah. that there is a way for it to survive and still yeah, be successful. You can't have six movies coming out in one year. I just find yeah. that to be overkill. They need Too to take their time and focus good. on the storytelling, yes. and yeah. and frankly, give the fans what they want. It doesn't to always a have to be a degree, to, obviously. To a degree, you know, there's yes. a, there's a, again, a, again, a, a balance, balance um, between, you know, giving the fans what they want and fan service. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, I, we want good stories. We want to see these characters do the things that make us love them. Um, but we don't need to constantly see things and people and places in the background that distract us from the story right. so that we don't notice how bad it is. Exactly. Exactly. So I would much rather uh, just have something that captures me right from the start. And this did. Um, I was immediately, and honestly, from the beginning, like he, James Gunn understands an ensemble. Um, yeah. He understands a team story. And, uh, and I think that, uh, right from the start he always maintained again the balance between um each character allowing them it's not even just about screen time but allowing them character development equally right. Um, right, right. so that you do care for all of them you are invested in all of them you find all of them entertaining in some manner or another um and uh yeah i think he's just king for that and, and i'm excited like i said to see where he takes the characters of DC and right. and how he makes them his own while still giving us what we expect to see from those characters. Right. And, and I love the eclectic sort of list of what he has coming up. I mean, I, what he's going to do with Swamp Thing, I think will be Oh, that'll be very awesome. Cool. That'll be interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, just to see these more obscure type characters. And I would not be surprised if we see Chris Pratt show up as Booster Gold. Um, <laughs> that's just what I think is going to happen. Um, he would be perfect for that character. Um, so yeah, I, I yeah, I'm excited for it. And who knows? I, I'm I really do think after Secret Wars, the only thing left is to have a DC Marvel crossover. Yeah, I, I know you. And we if, have if talked anyone, about that, and I would love that. If anyone can do it, it would be James Gunn. God, that he would be he one understands hell of an both. Achievement. He understands both worlds. Yeah, um, I agree. So, yeah, we'll yeah. Uh, 
We'll see where it goes. I mean, look, he did Suicide Squad and he did Guardians of the Galaxy, two movies involving ensemble casts. So I, I think he's definitely more than capable of it. Mm -hmm. And even with Peacemaker, I mean, having to bring all those different characters together to work together. I mean, especially with a character like Peacemaker that he was just so ridiculous and out. But he still managed to give all of them so much depth. He did. I found myself tearing up. I actually couldn't believe that John Cena could, you know, actually act and make me feel emotional because I've always just it, it seen was him a as good a performance. Tubit. Yeah, it was actually a good performance and I was really shocked to see him playing the piano. Yeah. I was um, like, wow, okay. And and James Gunn just he talk about making something out of nothing, you know. I mean mm -hmm. he he took characters that are so easy to despise and he made them endearing yeah um and it's pretty impressive yeah it is and i will say i think what i loved most about guardians of the galaxy which i understand that everything is branching off of this event but i think at this point we know the snap happened we get it we know that everything is now a result of all of this, but I really enjoyed that there really, there was no mention of Thanos. There was no mention of anything that, you know, happened in Endgame except for the quick little. Yeah. The, the star Lord summary. Yeah, exactly. And that was, it was it. the, I mean, Nebula was, right. it, it, it was, it. it was the gist of it. So, you know, you know, I mean, I don't want to hear about it anymore. Like, it's over. Thank you. I loved that time, well, but it's time to now start, you know, moving on. Well, I mean, I, I do think that again, it's, it's, it's the snap. Half the universe was I killed get and then brought back. It's, it's well, kind of it. a big deal. It is a big um, deal. And there is going to be an, an impact. There are going to be ramifications that are going to span the timeline for a little while. But I think now is the turning point. I do yeah. think that the story is about to start picking up momentum quite a bit. Um, and I, I hope that people haven't given up yet because I do think that there is a chance for them to be rewarded with an even bigger payoff than infinity war at the end of all of this. Um, I hope so. so. I she'll hope see, so. but um, people got to come out and see it the the numbers have not been particularly great for this movie and it's, it's very unfortunate because it is excellent and i highly recommend it and that's the problem now is that everything that they've done now leading up to this point it's it's a shame because now it's not even gonna matter whether you know there it is a good story because people are just gonna be like well i'm, I'm just i'm just over it i don't want to invest you know another decade of my life you know and that's another thing. They need to stop with that. I think the whole connecting thing, just, you know, do like Guardians did. Like these, you know, very much stood on their own, the three very of them much. together. All you of know, them. like start doing it going was its back own to little that universe format. within the universe. Yeah. yeah. Do like small little trilogies and let's just keep getting to know these these characters. I mean, Spider Man was kind of like that too, the Tom Holland ones. I mean, I yeah. get that that's not really MCU and it's Sony, but those three kind of really, like, you know, just were their own thing as well, their own little trilogies. So that's what I'd kind of like to go back to. But no, this agree. movie was this movie was absolutely fantastic. It was dope, yo. It was dope, yo. Dope so shit. if you've got, that's why I'm glad we're dropping this, you know, right before the weekend hits. So if you haven't seen it yet. Lake of Dork go, Wars. Calling go you watch out, it. Brother, calling you out. Jeez, go watch it. Take lots of tissues with you. I'm being serious. I'm just saying it right now. If you don't tear up or feel something watching this movie, you have no soul. <laughs> so I'm just putting that out there. She, and, she didn't. Uh, she didn't cry. That is not true. <laughs> I cried like a little. Those were fake tears. Bitch. So salty. <laughs> no, it got me a little bit too. I will admit there were there were definite tears. Come on, man! When down the cheeks. That cage and all those little oh, yeah. baby raccoons, and you see oh. 
just the way like, that they all climbed oh, on him like you know babies on their mother and just, just and then when he looks around and he sees all the other animals and the way he insists to peter that they it's like we have to they have to them take all. all of them and it was a very noah's ark moment a very noah's ark yes it extremely was great. yes it was i loved it and all the all the kids and that was the other thing I, i'm still a little confused by the very last post credit scene i don't know if it was supposed to mean anything i think so i, I was I, trying I don't to read the newspaper exactly, so other than the whole you know kevin bacon thing thing has been kidnapped by aliens like i was trying to see if there was something on the newspaper that might give us a clue and talking about the neighbor's yeah, son I'm, I'm curious about the neighbor's son I, yeah, like I think he's gonna who is be it? somebody for some reason, especially yeah. the way that it said that Star Lord would return. Yeah, so there has to be a end. reason. Yeah, so and I agree. That's how they suck us in. Yep, yeah, I'm all about yeah. getting sucked in. Welcome to the sticky spot. <laughs> Speaking of the sticky spot, so to our grading criteria, how many? Splats, do you give this film out of five? I'm not doing this because it's our premiere episode or anything like that, but I'm gonna give it five, five out of five. I really, really enjoyed this movie. I want to go see it again. Um, our lovely, crazy friend Tina, she has already seen it twice. Steve of Rebel Rock Radio. He's already seen it three times and was mentioning that he might see it a fourth time because his wife hasn't seen it yet. It was so good. And I could immediately watch it again. A... Oh, I could. I definitely could. Yeah, I, to me, that's I a mark of a great movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, it is. Even with knowing like the animal abuse. And, and you know, Tina was on with uh, with Row of Scarab Scuttlebutt. They were talking about this movie uh, Wednesday night. And, and I agree with Tina that even with them being CGI... I mean, it did, like, after a while, you forgot that they were CGI animals. And just the thought of an animal being treated that way just, it really broke my heart. I mean, even PETA has been praising James Gunn. Because this is, like, the yeah. perfect... PETA. Like, PETA! Right? <laughs> I know. They get a little too wild, but... They, they are. No, they are. I'm, I'm glad but that they this movie definitely, appreciated it, though. Oh, me too. Yeah, some powerful messaging there. It is. And you, sir? I'm calling you sir. So look, I'm affording you exactly. some Damn respect. respect. Respect to elders. Yoda. Yeah. What about man. Yoda? Anyway. Iota. Um, I, I, didn't, I can't hear you. What? Iota. What? Um, Do you have a Victrola? What are you <laughs> doing? Where are you going? Get out! Get out! How many splats? I am going to give it five splats. <laughs> right. Did you really face. just do that? <laughs> five splats. So that's what you do all in the projection the room? All the splats. I give it all the projection room. Stickiest yeah. floors yeah. in the U.S. Well. well Wait people, till I get overseas. If you have nothing to do this weekend, go watch Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Absolutely loved it. And also one thing we didn't mention was the music. The music was absolutely uh, amazing. James as Gunn always. has great taste. He, It was definitely its own character. He definitely chose those very well. And they fit perfectly. And as someone who no doubt. loves Florence and the Machine, Dog Days are over. Absolutely love that song. It was very uplifting. And uh, and that's another thing. Again, my auditorium loved it. Absolutely loved it. That was the other thing. You felt the presence. You, I mean, figure when the movie ended on me, I, I heard this lady who was sitting three rows behind me walking down saying, Oh my God, I cried so much more than I thought I was going to. But everyone around me was just talking about how good it was. So, yeah. I, I hope the word of mouth spreads. Yeah. I hope the word of mouth spreads. So go watch it. So, Josh, uh, do you have anything coming up? Do we have Lego stream with Mr. Rum on Sunday? 
I don't know. Yes. Probably not because Sunday's Mother's Day and my oh, mother's birthday. So oh, happy, happy birthday, birthday, mom. Yay, happy um, birthday. Yes. Happy so Mother's no, Day. No, I don't think I'm going there. to be building Lego. Yeah, you're probably right. He'll probably be with his Earth mom. So, but um, I don't know. Do they have Mother's Day? Do they care about their mothers in Britain? Look. Are they they're too worried about tea in a harbor? Anyway. Anyway. Well, very happy Mother's Day to my mom, who is fucking awesome. Happy Mother's and Day to your mother as well. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Who did a wonderful job of spreading our Pop My Culture stickers around at Spencer's and essentially told me without telling me that she put them near the vibrators. Hmm. Thanks, Mom. Yeah. And then lastly, thank you again to our Patreons now for signing spot. up. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you again already for your Thank contribution you much, it guys. is going to go to a very amazing. good cause um it's called ehlers danlos uh syndrome um there is a link on the patreon page if you want to learn more about it unfortunately one of our members of red five uh who is it's kelly um she has it her youngest uh kid has it alex so the fundraiser has actually been set up in alex's uh name because we absolutely love her we love her husband dragon buddy of the escape pod so love you, dragon boo yeah so every month at the end i'm going to be taking a portion of that and putting towards the fundraiser and then of course the rest of it will be invested in cute little stuff like this our business cards pins got a qr code sticker here and we got some more stickers in are very cute and some keychains so patrons that'll be going out as soon as possible i promise and of course last but not least because i love I mean, it i don't I even get one no you don't because i'm not I a patreon we'll be playing dungeons and dragons so please check out the red five tavern there it is scrolling down there on the banner so go check follow out, that guys. on yeah go sub it go sub Sub Watch to the Princess channel. Sprinkles. Princess Sprinkles swing on the stripper pole. Shit, yeah. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back you're, and watch. You're missing out. You're missing out. You really are. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy this segment. Uh, we are definitely looking forward to doing this more often. So again, please subscribe, comment, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you again here on the sticky spot. Stay sticky. Stay sticky.